Hi everyone, sorry it's been so long since our last tutorial. We have had a mega busy year last year. Um, we're sort of only going, getting around to getting back into the swing of doing some tutorials for you. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating kind of suspended text that's bolted in 3D space, as you can see here. So just a real simple track shot with the kind of motion graphics swinging out from the boxes. So that's what we're going to be doing. In this version of the tutorial, we're going to be using a method that will work for any After Effects version from version 7, I think, right through to Creative Cloud. So that's CS12345, 5.5, 6, and Creative Cloud. So this is for all people watching. Uh, slightly longer than the more recent one in which we use the camera tracker, but still you get the same result. So let's get straight in there. Um, this is our bit of footage that we're going to be using. As you said, just a real simple um, left to right track, right to left track. So let's put that straight into After Effects, drag and drop into your project window. I'm going to click and drag onto my little composition button down here, which should give us um, the size and dimensions that we need. First thing I'm going to do is go to composition settings. You may not have to do this, I have to do it on mine. Uh, change my start time code to zero and just leave it at that for the time being. That will just reset my time code reader to zeros all the way through. So here we are, here's the clip in the timeline. First thing I'm gonna do is, I wanna choose some tracking points uh, where I want to bolt my text to. So in the example, we had it over here and over here, I think it was a broom one as well, but let's, let's replicate that just for the sake of ease of this tutorial. So I'm gonna choose one of these little points over here, one of these stickers. I need to right click anywhere in the video and track motion. That will give me a track point. So in your video that you have, you may be walking down a corridor, you may be doing a left or right track, whatever it is you're doing. Choose the point that you want your text to be tracked to. Make sure it's something that stands out. Um, so this is perfect, it's got a high contrast kind of um, area, we've got black and white, and in my search area, I know it, I don't need to make it very big because my movement is minimal, that's all that's for. So when you've got your point, um, come down here to the bottom right corner and analyze forward. Um, make sure your player head was at the beginning of your timeline when you do that. So in my case, this is going to track from right to left. Uh, your tracker point may float a little bit, kind of judder around. Don't worry if it does. Um, it shouldn't do that once you've um, applied it to your null object, which we're going to do in a second. So once that's done, we're going to go up to layer, new, and choose null object. Uh, come back down to your tracker window and choose edit target and make sure you've got null one selected Hit OK and apply and OK again and that will give you this little red square with a load of dots So now if I track back through my timeline you should see your tracking null as it now is is kind of bolted to that one place Next thing we're going to get our text tool uh, Just click near your tracking null and type in anything you want. I'm going to type in the word text it's a little large, uh, bring it down to size, and get your selection tool, move it into position. Now, just by doing that and having our null, doesn't mean our text is gonna be bolted to it. We need to parent our text layer to our null using the pick whip tool. So um, you should get a little kind of squiggly line. Uh, get that on your text layer, click and drag onto your null. So now when we move around, the text follows the null. Nice and easy. Um, I can still move my text where I want and it will stay fixed to my null object. So that's the kind of first step we're going to do. Now, if you wanted a, another text layer kind of set back, so say near these boxes over here or some of those maybe, the quickest way to do this is if you click on your toggle switches and modes button at the bottom and check your 3D switch for your text layer. This is now a 3D layer. That's not to say it has depth. It is just possible to move it within 3D space. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So uh, Apple D if you're on Mac or Control D if you're on Windows. And I can either bring up my position control by hitting P on the keyboard. And I've got three numbers here. Um, these represent my X, Y, and Z value. Now if I go to my Z value and start clicking and dragging, I can send it back so it looks like it's going backwards down the corridor and the warehouse. So if you go here now, we've, we're still only using this one null object, but if you look, you get this kind of parallax look to it. 
Uh, there's only so far you can push this because if I go too far, as you can kind of see already, the text is starting to wobble ever so slightly. It's, you could probably get away with it in this example, but if you've got a lot more movement, you might notice that it doesn't sit true to your perspective. So we've got two pieces in there already. I'm going to go and throw in another null object um, on my timeline and do another tracking point. So layer, new null. Uh, I'm going to move that to roughly where my track is going to be, this point up here. So I'm going to go back on my video layer, right click again, track motion, and get my tracker point. Uh, to move your video around like this, just hold spacebar, it brings up your hand tool. And be careful when you click and drag on your tracker point, don't grab the middle point because you're going to move that around freely, which you don't want to do. Um, you want this kind of symbol here that you can, should be able to see at the moment. Click and drag, choose the um, point that you're going to track. So, so I'm going to go for this point just here. Now I'm in the middle of my timeline, so I'm going to have to move that back to the beginning and adjust where I want my tracking point. Same drill as before, analyze forward, leave it to track for a minute. So once your tracking is done, choose edit target, make sure you're on your second null object, hit OK, hit apply, and OK again. So now we've got the same thing over the left in this case. I'm gonna rename my null objects just so I can keep a track of which one's which. So null two, I'm gonna hit enter on the keyboard and change it to left box and do the same for my um, other null and call it right box. Um, I can even colour code these as well if you want to be really organised. So I can go right box, hold shift, hit my text and my text two layers, choose the little red box or blue, whatever you've got, and just give it, I don't know, something horrible like green. Don't like green. Left box, again, let's make another text layer. So text tool up here, we'll call this um, textical because we're funny and we're gonna make that 3D as well, and parent it to our left box null object. And it's done exactly the same as it did before. It's now bolted to our boxes. It doesn't look quite right, it's kind of overlapping the box, so I'm gonna move this around, scale it down a bit. Something around here. Okay, that's cool. So now we've got these three pieces of text which look similar to our example, like I showed you at the beginning, let's recap that. So we've got these kind of bits on the left, bits on the right, and they're off in Z space. The next thing we're going to do is look at bringing in uh, each text layer like they do in the example. So kind of swinging in like a barn door and fading at the same time. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to concentrate on this layer only because it's going to be the same for each bit of text. So I'm going to switch these other layers off. So using this first text layer, I'm going to get it in position at the top. Duplicate this like we did earlier, so Apple D, Control D, depending on which OS you're on. Slide it down and duplicate, slide it down and duplicate once more. And we've got our layers in there. These should all stay bolted as they do. Now to get them to rotate, you need to select all of your text layers. So to do this, click on one layer, hold shift and select the ones that you need, like I've done there. If I hit R on the keyboard, it brings up my rotation control for each layer. If I go ahead now using my Y value, they'll all rotate around the midpoint of your layer. Now we don't want this to happen. We want this to rotate around the right hand side of our layer. So we need to go back, change that to zero, hit A on the keyboard. This brings up our anchor point value. Now we need to shift everything using our X value here, which is the first set of numbers, just so that your anchor point is all the way on the right hand side like it is now. Now what will happen is your text layers will go out of position so just pop those back where you want them like we have here. Now if I hit R again on the keyboard go back to my Y rotation value I can make them swing in and out like they do on the example. So the next step is to bring in a camera. Uh, I'm gonna go layer new camera make note of the shortcuts so you can get around to learning those to speeds up your workflow uh, I'm going to hit OK on that and go ahead, select my text layers again and um, choose my Y rotation value to see how it looks. That's looking pretty cool. So now we need some keyframes. We need to start it off, slap next to the boxes, so somewhere around here. So go to the position on your timeline that you want it to start at, so I'm going to get one second. Hit the stopwatch for my Y rotation value. That's made one for all of my layers because they're all selected. I need to move forward in time. Let's go to roughly one and a half seconds. And 
click and drag to the position that you want it to finish in. So I'm going to slide it right around to where we were. That's now given us two keyframes for each layer, which represent its start point and end point. Nice and simple. The next thing we want to do is bring in a opacity keyframe so it fades in at the same time that it swings in. So to do that, with all your layers selected, if you haven't got them, remember you can shift click each layer. So hold shift, click, click, click. Hit T on the keyboard. That will bring up our opacity layer. Now if you want to get these in time with your keyframes for your rotation, if you didn't do it like perfectly at one second, two second, three second, you can hold shift and tap R. So now we can see both values for your opacity and your rotation. So same drill, let's hit a stopwatch. Now we don't want these to be visible once they're at the side of the boxes. So we're going to slide that back down to zero. Go forward in time to your next keyframe, slide it back up to 100. And as we did with our wire rotation, we've got two values representing your start and end point. Now it doesn't quite look the same as our example because they were kind of offset. Um, swinging in tandem but kind of like offset in time. So in order for these to swing in like they do on our example I need to make sure that my top second, third and fourth layers are the same in my timeline. So at the moment this one here is at the top it's above four, three and one so I need to put that at the bottom. Four it needs to be above that one. Three needs to be above that one. So now they're in some kind of order. So now I'm going to keep my text layer one where it is Go to this one, slide it forward a few frames, slide this one forward a bit more than its previous one, same for this layer. Now when we watch that back, they all slide in on their own timing. That all looks a little jolty, it kind of snaps into position. If you want it to have a kind of smoother transition like our example does, uh, you're going to want to go into your keyframes, so shift click all your layers, hit U on the keyboard. If I just treat this first set here, so my Y rotation on my first text layer at the top, right click on one of these keyframes, go to keyframe interpolation and change it from linear to bezier. Now what that will do is a very subtle change but it kind of slows your impact down. If you look at it on a on the graph view, you can see if we give that a bit more of a curve, it will slide into position as opposed to kind of just have a linear motion. So that's a bit mad, it kind of whips in but comes to a gradual ending compared to our other layers. I'm going to leave it as it was, so I'm going to undo that, but make sure you do have a play around, especially with the graph view for each bit. It can be a really powerful tool for your animation. So that's essentially it for your animation within your scenes. I can go ahead, as we did earlier, and duplicate these layers, send them back in space, forward in space, um, have multiple null objects to different areas, having them fade in. You might want to play around with your animation, so as opposed to just swinging in as ours do, you could have them scale in, you can have them sliding in from behind something. Um, experiment with it, see what you can come up with, and post your responses to the tutorial. Now, as you said at the beginning, we're going to have another tutorial showing how to use the camera tracker tool inbuilt to CS6 and Creative Cloud. Slightly more refined way of doing it, a lot quicker. Uh, but for those that don't have it, hopefully you found this useful. Don't forget, like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you next time.